All right, uh, this is Kyle Cease, and um, I'm excited because uh, I had been doing stand-up for 20 years, and then in the last eight years, a lot of you know that I started getting very inspirational and realizing quite a bit about life and things that are controlling us and everything. I realized what I need to do is merge them together, and, uh, and uh, it's hard because uh, I have no uh, idea of what that would look like. I'm, but it's weird because I'm so used to inspiration being serious because everyone's like, and that's when you get in the moment. And then when you're there, you can be happy. And then, but with comedy, it's like hating everything. It's just like, man, those, everyone's a bitch and you hate them. And, uh, oh, dude, that sucks too. And so I'm like trying to figure out how to put those together because it's hard to do. But a lot of people in the inspirational world are so serious. They're just like, they're just like, you know, and, and when, when you're there and then you'll make a joke and they'll be like, don't do, make jokes. We're about being happy. And I'm like, well, let's be funny then too. Cause that's part of being happy. I mean, I can get you there way quicker with a joke. And they're like, no, this is serious happy. This is serious happy, and what we need to do here is figure out a way to be happy. And I'm like, I just made four jokes. And they're like, we don't do that here. Around here, the way to get happy is to sit under a tree and stop shaving your armpits. Does everyone have their weird necklaces? Okay, and then I'll make a joke, and they'll be like, so half the room will laugh, and then the other half will look at me like, mm -mm. this is about being happy. Don't make people laugh. I'm like, that, I just was making people laugh. And then you'll be with a bunch of people that are comics and they laugh at everything. But then it's different too because they'll be like, <laughs> and then they'll be like, yeah, fuck life. Is that, wait, no, there's got to be a thing in between. And they're like, nope, nope, life sucks. But it's funny how much life sucks. And then the serious people are like, we have a nine step process to being happy. I'm like, I just was happy until you brought out your weird process. Like, quit saying you're not happy yet. Why, why do you have to have 97 ways to happiness? Just do the thing right now. That's the weirdest thing, too, is people go, I, I remember going to a seminar and someone said, I've come up with a nine-step process to ending procrastination. I'm like, I got one. Do the thing. You don't need to figure out a nine-step process. You don't need to go to a therapist and figure out why you're not happy. You just go be happy. You don't need to. You don't need to go. Why is it happening? Why is this? And then the then the therapist is like, well, when you were a kid, and da da da. And you're like, okay, I get it. Now there's gonna be people that write me. Well, you know, I had a process, and it helped me with my therapist. I'm like, yeah. In 12 years, your therapist finally got you happy. Well, I'm just saying you could do it right now. Just start laughing right now. Just go. <laughs> you can do that right now. <laughs> but now when you go happy, <laughs> and then you want to go screw everything. Nothing's possible. Now that. That's the thing. Just stay in the happy zone. You can be happy at any point. You just start singing. You just start singing. You know, As around the sun, the earth knows she's revolving. Just look at what happens. You just start getting happy and you're there. You don't need to do a thing. There's no process. Try being happy for a day. Because whatever you do in one moment, the next moment you're going to start doing, right? The next moment you're going to do too. So if you're analyzing how to be happy, you're just practicing getting good at analyzing. That means like the next minute you're going to start trying to be happy too. No, just be there. Just be there. It's easy. It's easy to do. But you can't do it because everyone thinks nothing's possible or they have a 25 step plan that they think it takes 12 years to become happy. And they're like, okay, first we let go of the past. We let go of it, which I agree with. You let go of it. But people will go, how do you let go of it? And you go, hmm. And then they'll go, that's one to fizzle on. What is letting go? I'm just like, just let's have fun and it'll just be dropped. And they'll be like, what is dropped? Is there a dropped? <laughs> I think Norman Mailer said it best. You're like, wait, no, can we just, like, you don't need to, it doesn't take a week. We should just, if you just start now, and they'll be like, mm, what is starting when there is no beginning? I'm like, I get that, but still, let's just be happy, and let's, mm. A queen in the middle isn't the best as the king in the end. I don't know what that meant, even. And they'll be like, Gandhi said, do you even know who Gandhi is? Mm-hmm. 
Just because you post him on your Facebook every four days doesn't mean you know who he is. Mm, I do. He's a man who is bald and he brought the people. To what? To the, f the front of the thing? What did he bring the people to? He made it better and then he was hungry. I know he's hungry. Mmm, that's a good one. <laughs> that's one to ponder. Stop pondering! Have you ever seen a kid ponder? Mmm, the swing. What is going on the swing? It's back and forth. I think Sir Cookie Monster said it best when he said, What is the swing we go on when we go on no forever? Shut up! Go swing! Well, I have to let go of the slide first. I went on the slide and I fell off. And I've spent the last two years reliving it, telling people about it, refeeling the slide. I can't get on the swing. Just go swing. Hm. I would love to. <laughs> but my therapist said, first we have to figure out why my dad pushed me off the slide. But I think it was Sir Oliver... Shut up. Very good. Just let's play. All right. But first I have to let go. There's a book I have. Have you ever read The 97 Steps to Playing? No. Just start playing. Why are you scared to play? Everyone's so scared of everything. Like, and then they use quotes. And, and we, I realize I do this too. I get it. I do it too. I've done it. I'll be like, hey, you guys all got to do this. I think I'm just telling myself that. If you look at all my last videos where I'm like motivating you, that's me just figuring it out for me. I'm just like, hmm. And if I do it out loud, then I feel like I'm being productive because it helps. Because people do get work and people do change. And so it's good that I'm saying it out loud, I guess. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's like I should just do it. Because that's what influences me more. Like when people just do the damn thing. You know, I think it was Sir John Cleese who said, it's one thing to tell people about creating, it's the other thing to do it. So that's what I got to do, and that's what I'm trying to do here. This is a little bit funnier, <laughs> so what I'm doing is still creating. I guess when I made those other videos, I was still creating, so it's okay. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what the hell is the best thing. I don't know what the hell the best thing is. That's the other thing. Stop thinking that everyone who advises you knows better than you. Like, I don't know. Everyone thinks, like, that guy's a guru now, and he knows, and I'll ask that guy everything. Well, ask yourself the thing. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I have some videos, and that's me talking out my shit. That's me going, okay, so, okay, I figured it out, everybody. Here's some tips on life. And then I, I just say it out loud, and everyone's like, that's a really good point. And then I go, yeah, it was pretty good. And then, meanwhile, I didn't make a comedy sketch. But, like, this video is still good. Like, people like it. But I don't have the answers at all. I don't have the answers for you. Everyone thinks everyone else has the answers for them. They'll be like, they'll be like, um, man, I really like this girl, but what should I do, Earl? And then, like, a 400-pound guy is like, I don't know. Give her some chicken. She might like fried chicken. Well, that's what you like, Earl. That's what I would do if I wanted to date you, Earl. And I don't. Why not? Because I can smell you from Florida. Well, I'll give me chicken. I don't want to give you chicken. Why not? Because you'll keep making smells. Hmm. It's going to get funnier. I know it. I feel it. But part of me is a little bit trying to make it funny. There's a part of me in here going, I'm going to make it funny. It'll be funny eventually. And so I'm not quite playing yet. So I just got to play where I completely don't give a shit what you think, and I just start playing. And I just start playing. Do you like this, Diego? Is that good for the screen? Is it good? Does it help when I do that? I'm just getting for I'm having more fun. <laughs> Chair! You're all there! And then bottle. See? You can have fun with a bottle. Yeah! So I'm just having fun, and I'm just, I just cracked my knuckle. I just sat down and cracked my knuckle. It hurt a little bit, because I think I also broke it. I don't think I broke it. I think I just cracked it. That'd be weird if I cracked it, like, off. And then I'd be doing the video like, anyway, <laughs> have fun. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
What is spirituality? Jesus Christ, are we going to all do this for six days? Hmm. Let's all reflect. We're going to let go of everything by reflecting on it. Here we go. Let's start the process of letting go by bringing it up for seven days. Welcome to our seminar. Here we go. We're going to start the process of letting go of what happened with your father by talking about it for six hours. Are you ready? Talk about it. And you're like, talk about what? How much your father beat you. Why? So we can let go of it. Well, aren't I just bringing it up? No, we're letting it go. All right, well, uh, when I was a kid, he said, get over there. Mm -hmm. And then he said, I'm going to hit you. And then he hit me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, right, it hurt. Mm -hmm. I'm crying now. Mm -hmm. That's you letting go of it. No, it's me reliving it. Mm. It's releasing. What do you mean it's releasing? You can see it going out there in the... No, I'm just thinking about it now. We have six more days of this shit? Yes. Tomorrow we focus on the girl that cheated on you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to day two of the Letting Go seminar. Everyone pick a partner. Tell your partner for the next six hours about every bad thing you've been through so we can let go of it. Now we're going to put bullets in our heads so we can let go of them. All right, we're going to shoot guns into our heads so we can let go of the bullets. The bullet will then go through on the other side and you will be free of the bullet. No, it'll go into my head and I'll relive it. Mm -hmm. We're going to all reflect on that bullet. We're going to not change for six days. But then after it, you'll feel free. No, I don't feel free at all. I feel, I feel more bullets. Mm -hmm. Now, next thing. We're going to all... <laughs> but that's what they are. That's what the retreats are. That's what half the retreats are. They're very good and they're very healing for a lot of people. But also, let's just start. Let's just show up and do the thing you want to do. If you want to actually let go of something, you replace it with what you want to do. You just start doing it. You know, I don't want to, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that we don't even need to let go of. That's the weirdest thing. There's so many things we don't need to let go of that you go to a thing and they tell you you need to let go of. My fucking fiance has so much life figured out and she started dating me and I'd be like, well, we got to get you to let go of this thing because I learned that crap and she'd be like, well, I'm fine about it. Like, I don't need to, I'm fine. I'll be like, mm-hmm, that's just you being numb to it. And maybe she's just fine. Maybe we don't need all this training. Maybe we should just play and do the damn thing. And, and sometimes we'll figure out too, like we'll realize, wait, the government's spraying these things in the air and they're controlling us. Maybe the cure to that is to not yell about it all day. Maybe the cure to that, if we realize that the TV is controlling us, and I'm talking to me right now, is to go play and create and not go, well, what's going on is the TV is bad, everybody. The TV is bad. So at least we're not hypnotized anymore because now we're spending eight hours a day talking about how bad the TV is. Woo! We're free. We're free of the reins of the jail of the TV. Everybody, the TV's bad. Everybody, I'm free now. Why are you watching TV? I'm free. So I'm going to make sure you are scared too. Because you all need to change. You all need to change. I'm free, so you all need to change. Everybody change. You all change. And now I'm going to tell you about how I spent all last week letting go of my childhood abuse. This is what, because I realized at this event that when I was a kid, my father was terrible to me. So I let go of it. I let go of it. 
I spent a week at this event letting go of it and now I'm free of it. He would say to me, you suck. And then he would hit me and I realized I needed to learn that. And I'm going to write a book about how I've let go of it. I've completely freed myself. I've completely freed myself of what my father did to me when I was a kid. I'm free now. I'm over my problems thanks to that seminar. We gotta go to more seminars so I can get over it again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so free. I'm just so free. Everybody. I freed myself because I realized that I've been spending so many years working on letting go of my father. I'm so glad I'm over my father beating me. What are you talking about? Oh, we were just talking about how my father beat me when I was a kid and now I'm over it. Really? Yep. Because what happened was when I was a kid, <laughs> it's crazy. See, the reason I have the story is because I was a kid and I was beaten and uh, my father did it. <laughs> but now I'm over it. I was telling them earlier and now I'm over it. And now I'm over this thing happening to me. I'm free again. I'm free. I'm having fun right now because I'm freeing myself because I'm not even thinking anymore about the anxiety attack I had eight years ago. Here comes the entire story. <laughs> That's the old me. Now I'm a free man. Just sipping tea. That's all I'm doing. That's how you let go of the story. You don't keep telling people how you let go of it. <laughs> I'm talking to myself right now. I have driven everyone around me nuts. I'm realizing right now, I have told everybody about my anxiety attack and my old stories nine million times. So now, it's up to me to play. Diego, I'm sorry. My cameraman friend, Diego. He's the man on the computer here. And uh, to my fiance, I'm sorry I told you about my anxiety story so many times. Baby. Mandy. 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 I'm sorry I told you about my anxiety story. Remember when I told you that whole thing? I'm sorry I did that. Now I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes telling you how I'm over telling you that. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess you're not, you're, you, you have to hear about me more. Sorry about that. That's the next stage of getting over it, telling everybody how you got over it. Well, I thought everything was a problem until I went to this event, and now I know that I'm free. Really? Because I'm over here with a story, too. Nope. I've come to this realization <clears throat> that who I was in my past life was a butterfly named Peterton. Really? Mm -hmm. I went to a deep meditation and I realized that who I am is a butterfly named Peterton. And meanwhile, they're, they're like moving a couch across the room like, that's great. And they're thinking inside, but they can't say it. They're thinking, like, can you fucking help me with the couch? Nope. I need you to hear about how what I did in my past life was I was a butterfly named Peterton. And I would just, just listen to me for the next hour. I don't, I don't, and they're inside going, I don't think you've been cured at all. And you're like, I would flap my wings to freedom. <laughs> How's that sound for familiar? Because you know how I like to try to be free now? Do you see the connection? Do you see how the universe is lining us up? See, in my past, I was a butterfly named, named Peterton. And I was flying and I was flapping my wings around. And you know how I want to be free now. So I've come to this realization that who I am is that butterfly. And before that, in my life before that, I was Alexander Graham Bell. What? Mm -hmm. I invented the telephone. <laughs> and it makes sense now because you know how I like to communicate. 
And you know how he likes to communicate, that's why he invented the phone. And you know I text all the time. So according to the universe, I was Alexander Graham Bell. The universe, isn't that a weird coincidence? Isn't that weird? It's so weird. Earlier today, I thought to myself, I have to go to the bathroom. And then I walked by my bathroom. It was like the universe heard me, it was right there. Like I said, I have to poo. And then the universe supplied me with a toilet. Isn't that weird, you guys? Isn't that weird, everybody? Everybody listen to me for the next hour while I tell you all the things that aren't really coincidences. It's so weird. It's so weird. I, here's, a, here's a box that says MacBook Pro on it. And I was just thinking to myself how I'm a pro at things. Isn't that weird? Like I was just thinking pro and now it says MacBook Pro. That is weird, you guys. I really think that the universe I really think that the universe wants me to know. It's reflecting that it wants me to know that I'm downloading a thing. Hmm. And then they're thinking, this is, this is why I can't be your friend. You're like, well, the universe, I guess you're not supposed to be my, the universe. Can we just, can we just go get pizza? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Let me ask, let me download an answer. Let me reflect on that. Hum. Hum. Did you get anything about burgers right now? Because I just got burgers. Like, I feel like I'm supposed to be in alignment with burgers. I didn't. I, sure, we can go get burgers. I think that's what the universe would want. Oh my God, there's a McDonald's commercial on TV right now. Do you see this? No. Right now, right now, McDonald's is having a commercial when we said burgers. I think the universe wants us to eat McDonald's. I really doubt that. I, don't, I just think the universe has its own thing going on. Well, you can do what you want, but I'm listening to my calling. Why is your calling? Why is your calling, McDonald's? I knew you'd question me, and this is why I have to X you out of my life forever. I'm, so, I'm sorry. We can go eat McDonald's. Let me see if I can still be your friend. Hum. Hum, hum. I just got back Tuesday. I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means either. Let me ask it. Forn, skrill, scrimdle. Alexander Graham Bell. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I have that we can be friends if you bring the right hat to the gate of love. All right, just can you help me with this couch? But then the other people, the other way, that's kind of weird too, when it's just like, Nothing's possible at all. Life's bullshit, man. I know what it's like, man. There's all kinds of crap going down, man. Like Kim Kardashian. Like, I can't believe... No, I'm, I'm using the wrong character. There's no guy that would be that insightful that would talk about Kim Kardashian. It's more like, oh my God. But, but then there's the other way, too. Oh my God. So like, okay, listen to this. Kim Kardashian, like she like got like married and then like divorced. And it's like, what? And then Amber said that and I was like, oh my God, I'm like that. Like, 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 like. And you're like, oh, come on, man. Oh, my God. Look at, look at the magazines. Kim Kardashian sneezed. 
Kim Kardashian sneezed. You can like look it up on YouTube and see her sneeze outside of a Starbucks. Like apparently she like came out of a Starbucks and like she had an itch in her nose and the cameramen were there because they're always there because TMZ is the greatest show there is. There's nothing better than TMZ. They get the real things. The real things. I don't, I don't know, man. No, you watch TMZ and it's like, it's like TMZ, there must, like the, there must be some reason for TMZ existing, like to speed up our evolving. Like shows like TMZ, it'll be like this. It'll just be like, well, look at this. Look who we caught at the airport. And then it's like, just like, like, you know, just Colin Farrell at the airport. And the camera's like, boom, 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 boom. Nice hat, Colin. And then like, it'll show guys in a, in a room just being like, okay, listen to this. We got Colin Farrell. He's got a new hat. And then it just shows like that main guy just like, new hat. And then it'll be like, hey, Colin, Colin. And he's just like trying to get home. He just flew across the country and he's like, like, what do you want? I'm not good at an Australian accent. And they're like, they're like, uh, what? Where'd you get the new hat? You got a new hat or something? You just hear this a lot. Uh, yes, yes, I got a new hat. It's uh, something, do you like it? <laughs> no, we don't, Colin. Oh, coming up, Paris Hilton. And her face. So Paris Hilton has a face. Oh. Then a commercial. You know, when my kids have teeth, I use Colgate. Mom! Who, who still falls for those commercials? Just like, that a commercial is real. Like, everyone's mind when a commercial comes on, oh, this is a product for Colgate. They're not just watching a commercial going, huh, that kid likes Colgate? Huh, maybe I should get my kids Colgate. If that, that blonde woman I don't know's kids like Colgate, maybe I should get that too. Huh. Ma! I don't want my kids to say that. I guess I'll get Colgate. No, everyone watching a commercial is like, is like, oh, okay, this is a commercial for Colgate. Like, you, you, you see around the behind the scenes of what's going on. Like, no one's like, no one sees a tampon commercial and it was a woman just sitting there going, you know, some days I flow light and some days I flow heavy. And the woman's like, huh, me too. Do you do anything about it? So I use maxi pads. I'm like, huh, what are these? Maxi, do you have a pen? This woman on the screen wants to just tell me about this thing. I don't even know if this is a sell for the product. Like, just she just wants me to know she uses maxi pads. Huh. They talk like the pe the commercial. Some of the commercials talk like the people are talking back to the screen. <laughs> you know, some days I'm working a lot and I get a headache. <laughs> yeah, I get those. What what about it? So I use Excedrin. Oh, okay. Like, the, why aren't you t listening to my question back? Because I'm a screen and we both know that I can't talk to you, so why? And, and then, then there's the next level of people that are like, I don't buy those commercials, I know they're bullshit. And then you look in their fridge, it's like 97 Cokes, 47 Gatorades. And you're like, mm-hmm. Glad you don't buy it. Glad you don't buy it. I don't buy that crap at all. <laughs> anyway, do you guys want to go to Starbucks? Well, why don't we go to this Ma and Pa coffee shop down the street? No, Starbucks. I can only go there. Why? I don't know. I just juiced. I put a bunch of, my fiance put a bunch of veggies in a, in a juicer and then gave it to me, and now I'm drinking juice. It's very good for me. I just spilled some of it on my shirt, though. <laughs> and the mic's down there, so I don't know if you, if you can even hear me right now. So let's just test it. Balls, penis, scrotum. <laughs> if I spilled this in the right place, you have no clue what I just said. In fact, I need to make it look like I said something really nice. I need to say balls, penis, scrotum while it looks like I'm saying a positive thing. Balls, penis, scrotum. Testicles. Vagina. That looked like I do coke when I did that. I don't. I don't do coke. 
<laughs> one time a rumor started about me that I did coke. I heard one time. I heard a comic say that, and then another comic said that I do coke. And I just itched my nose while I said that. Let me tell you something. I'm scared of bees. I didn't have my first drink until my 21st birthday. When we go to Whole Foods, my fiance sometimes pays with her discount card, but I'm not allowed to pay for it. Like it has to come out of her uh, wallet, but sometimes she doesn't have the money, so I will give her the money, and I will be horrified that I'm gonna get caught. Like I'll be in the room like, what if they see us? Like what if they catch us? And even my amazing, beautiful, innocent, sweet fiance is like, dude, you are such a pussy. The idea of me doing coke is so funny. Like, I am so scared to get in trouble and to do anything wrong. Anyone that knows me knows I'm on a raw food binge right now. I'm scared of hamburgers. Like, and now I want a hamburger, but I can't because I, in a moment of wanting to change my life, declared to all of you that I was going to eat all raw for 180 days, and I'm on day 11. And I want a pizza right now. I want a pizza. But I can't because I know I'll eat it, and then I'll get all freaking tired, and I'll be like, ooh. But I'm trying to change my life, and I did. I went 90 days of eating all raw, and it was amazing. But man, just chill out, Cease. I'm with you. For anyone going, dude, this guy's extreme, 180 days. I'm with you. What the hell's wrong with me? I'm on day 11, feeling fine, probably because I ate raw, though. So I'd probably otherwise be groggy if I ate the burger and be like, oh, okay, 400 years. 400 years or I give away $10,000 to a boat. 400 years of just eating uh, only Siamese cats. 400 years. I read in a book once that Siamese cats are the cure for everything. So now I know it. And now I know the right way to get happy. So the way to get happy is... 400 years of juicing Siamese cats. If I don't, I have to give $10,000 to a boat. I'm going to buy my fiance a train if I don't eat Siamese cats for 400 years. And people will be like, well, you'll be dead in 400 years. Not if I eat the cats right. If I eat the cats the right way, I will be free. I will be a free person in 400 years. Jesus, Cease. I can't stand who I used to be. To my family, I am sorry. I am sorry. I have just declared so many things and just, man, made so many things about me. It's time to play. Like, are you kidding me? Like, here's my challenge. I learned to be successful as a comedian before I learned how to be a person. Like, when I was like 12, and now I'm not, now I'm reliving it, like, but I'm, re I'm 12 and I'm on stage. When I was, tw when I was a little kid, I wore a suit and watched Evening at the Improv. I didn't, like, play. We, I was best friends with my mom, not kids. Like, we would play baseball, and I, at 4.30, would leave my friends so I could go watch Family Feud with my mom. And then we'd go to taco time, and it was fun. Mom, don't think I'm not loving the taco time. <laughs> when I was a kid, one time, my friend Garth, and I, we had a smoke of a cigarette. And this is the exact thing that happened. I took the cigarette and I put it in my mouth and I took a puff and I got so scared and I left and I left Garth and Garth has passed away and I miss you and I hope you're doing good. Uh, but I ran and I told my mom and I said, mom, I'm really sorry, but I took a, I took a puff of a cigarette. And my mom would be like, well, I'm, I'm glad you told me, you know. But, like, inside, my mom must have been like, God, what a pussy. Like, dude, take a cigarette smoke. Like, I lived under my, my mom's ideology. Like, I am so sorry to all my friends because I, I realize that's what it is. Like, I learned how to be an adult first. When I was eight, I was, like, best friends with the teachers and my mom. When I was a kid... I remember being in elementary school and Frank Lupo, we all did the Pledge of Allegiance, and Frank Lupo goes, he said, I pledge allegiance to the flag, Michael Jackson is a fag. And then I got up, this is the exact thing that happened. 
I got up and I went over to Mr. Sissel and I said, this is the exact three of us. Here we go. Um, Mr. Sissel. Yes, Kyle. Um, when we were saying, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Uh-huh. Frank Lupo said, um, I pledge allegiance to the flag. Michael Jackson is a fag. So you might want to... This is Mr. Sissel. Exactly what he did. Frank, can you come over here? And picture me just standing there like, we got him. And Frank would be like, yeah. Did you say, I pledge allegiance to the flag, Michael Jackson is a fag? Yeah. Don't. Could you not say that? Okay. And then me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Mr. Sissel. Mr. Sissel. Yeah. Um, when we said, I pledge allegiance to the flag, or when you told, let me do that again, Mr. Sissel, when you told Frank not to say that, yeah. Um, he looked at me mad. So if you could. <sighs> Frank. Don't look at Kyle. All right. Are you happy? Thank you, Mr. Sissel. I think we've done our job. And then here's me every day for the rest of the year. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Mr. Sissel's like, oh. like, what an annoying kid I was. What an annoying, I'm sure I was adorable. I'm, and I'm fine with it. I'm not like sitting here going, I'm reflecting like, and then I don't know why I said Mr. Sissel. I don't need to write a book about why I said it to Mr. Sissel. And I don't need to go to a seven day seminar where I let go of that I said it to Mr. Sissel. It's funny. You just say it and you laugh about it. You just make it funny. I don't need to go to a seminar where I go, and what do you think you wanted to express to Jim Sissel? What is it you were trying to get out of that? Do you think you were trying to get some type of love? I guess. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and let it out. Then me, next for two months. I realized that I told Mr. Sizzle because I was trying to get love. Jesus. Just let's chill for a minute. I'm talking to me. Fourth grade, fifth grade, every year. Best friends with teachers, not friends with the people in the room. And they'd be like, do you want to go like egg a house? No. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, they're going to go egg a house. And then I would like, then I would, I would like go out with my friends. And at one point, they'd like, one of them was like, let's throw a rock at Albertsons. This is a grocery store. And then like, just picture him saying that and cut to a wide shot of me already like 100 feet away running home with my fat body. Just like, <laughs> mom. Ryan said he's going to throw a rock at Albertsons. Well, I'm glad you told me. Luckily, my mom was like way too lazy to do anything. Just, all right. Well, let's go to taco time. All right. We'll go to taco time. Then we'll be at taco time. Mom, I'm so glad we came here and to, to discuss this. What are we going to do? What are we going to do about dad? Uh, what do you mean? I don't know. Seems to be grumpy lately. 
I told on everybody. Dude, Kevin, I am sorry, man. I told on you so much. My poor brother. No wonder he's so different than me. Like, I went, like, every time my brother did anything, I'd like, one time I bit my own arm and said Kevin did it. I lied. I bit my own arm. I'd go, Mom, Kevin bit me. Here was the dumbest part, though. I literally bit my own dental records into my arm. So, like, Mom just looked at it and goes, that's weird that Kevin bit you because Kevin doesn't have braces and you do, you fat idiot. Oh. How do you get out of that? I thought Kevin did it. I thought it was Kevin. You're right. You're right. Turns out I did it. I bit my arm. Mom, I bit my arm. Would you stop telling on yourself, you idiot? What are we going to do? What are we going to do about all this? Let's go to taco time and eat everything there. After Family Feud, we'll go to taco time and we'll eat everything there is. Can I trade in my 180 day rule because I'm a normal person now? Like my happiness will make me happy. Like, I'll be fit. I don't need, I want to go out and party with my friends. I want to take over to dinner. Like, and then, and then hear their shit. You know, I want to hear their stories. I go, so tell me about you. What's your name? I'm your father. Okay. And what do you do? Alan. What do you do? Well, I, uh. I created a motorcycle company. We started with one member, now we have 40,000 members. If anyone knows my dad, that is the greatest impression ever. My dad, my dad, we'd watch TV. My dad somehow strategically always stood in between me and the TV. He would come up with a thought and he'd think about it. And he would stand in between me and the TV. You'd just be trying to watch a movie in this gigantic living room and you just see my dad's ass and you see him thinking. And he always had a ton of change in his pocket. He'd just sit there with change. Just got my change. Just shake the change. And then at night, he would go to bed and he would take this giant pile of change and put it on the nightstand in the morning, put it back in. But he never used change. I've never seen him use change. He just kept getting more change. And by, by the end of the week, the pocket would be really big. And he'd just have this giant lump. I don't know if it would be the end of the week. It's not like Monday I have no change and then I start off Mondays. <laughs> I start off Mondays change free and then I keep going and then I get more and more change. He's cool though. When I was 15, he took me to, or maybe six, I think 15 because I just got my permit. He took me to LA. I was a comic and I got a call from LA and they wanted to work with me. This lady, Louise Palanker, wanted to work with me. And uh, I went out to L.A. And my dad, on Christmas Day, just dropped everything and just drove me straight to L.A. Isn't that crazy? He was like, well, let's go. Like, they, my dad was completely oblivious to the idea that this wouldn't work, it was then, which I think I got from him. My dad was cool. And is cool. He still is. He, in fact, he's really cool now. He started, but he started all these different companies just out of nowhere. And at times I went through this thing where I would try to figure out, you know, my childhood and everything, and I know one thing I learned from him was just starting. He just started a. He would start a company all the time. I remember when we was starting. He we were on our way to go to uh, Yellowstone Park, and he came with this idea for this motorcycle company, and he he put out this 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 envelope, and and or he, I'm sorry, he put out a brochure, and it was like you can join my company. Uh, and it was like 55 bucks a year or for 155 bucks, you know, you can advertise and it was like a good deal because what they would get would be connection to those dealers and they'd get dif different deals and they started meeting in different places and everything. But I remember just starting it. It was just this idea. Yeah. And you'd just be like, we're going to do this. And at the time it was crazy. We'd all just be sitting there like, what do you mean you're doing that? Like you own a plumbing company. That's what you should be doing. And he'd be like, no, I'm going to do this. And my mom hated motorcycles, right? So she's just like, well, I don't know about this. But then it was, it was funny because my dad like pulled the biggest 180, which I probably will do too. At one point I'll be like 45 and I'll be like, 
I've wanted to be a clown my whole life. And then, like, just every day you see me, just giant clown nose and clown outfit and just like, hey, everybody, it's your real, it's your real father, Kyle. It's your real father. It's your real father. And I'm here and I'm in my clown suit, what I've always wanted to be. And here I am. And everybody, when you talk to me, let's all juggle, okay? Let's spin plates and juggle. That seems to be what happens to men. Like when they hit like 45, they're like, what am I doing? They're like, what the hell am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm like in this thing. The kids are grown up. I think that's what every guy goes through. This weird, un, uh, natural craving to be free. And then they like make this thing where they put their sperm out and all of a sudden there's this brat and they're stuck with it for 18 years. And kids are amazing. I love kids. I want to have kids. But like you got this kid and there's this kid and you're just like, well, there goes my life for 20 years. <laughs> that must be crazy. When you're a parent, there must be this weird split. Like that's the most beautiful thing. That's half of me that just came out. And there goes my life for 20 years. 20 years. 20 years I'm going to have a, a kid just every day. Just he wakes up when he wants to. I can't, I can't sleep in anymore. Just starts off with just crying. That's how the baby starts off. Just, you have a kid and it's just full time crying. Just, and you lose your wife right away. If you're a dad, you lose your wife because your mom's like, your mom's got a, a weird chemical attachment to the baby. So if the mom's crying, you just, ah, ah, we gotta do the thing. And you're just like, can we just sit through the movie? Can we just watch the movie? Well, I heard, Ugh. I heard that in the other room. I, yeah. So I need to, I need to go in there. I need to go in the room. Uh, fine. Pause. It's like Denzel Washington like this. Or it's like a weird pause. It's like, and you're like, <laughs> it's funny. Anyway, though, the baby. And then you go in there and there's this like, the baby's fine. It's just like, he's not doing anything. You know, it's just this thing. And you're like, oh. Oh, and the husband's like, did I get a prenup? I did get, I have a prenup, so I can't get out of this divorce. I didn't get a, a signature that if I just left, uh, there's no way out. So the baby's just like, Gah. and you're just like, really? Gah. Is all it takes? Gah. Mm -hmm. Gah. Ah, all right. Go. And then, like, no going back to the movie. The guy wants to finish the movie. The woman's just like, next thing you know, she's holding the baby with one hand and on the cell phone with her girlfriend. And he's like, we have Paz Denzel Washington here. And she's like, mm. and so he said, yeah, what'd your baby say when he was, when he was one? And you just hear through the phone. Ish. He said, ish. Oh, that's so cute. We should look at our babies together. We should compare them. And you're sitting here like, ah, and Denzel Washington movie. I can't watch a movie with my wife anymore. It doesn't matter because women don't watch the whole movie anyway. My fiance has seen the beginning to every single movie I have. She has no clue how they end though because she falls asleep. And, I, and a guy's like, I need to see what happens to the three amigos. Like, do they get out of it or will El Guapo win? And the woman's like, I don't know. And, and, and a guy cares, too, about details, too. Like, you don't know who that is? That's Chevy Chase. He was in Fletch. That's from Caddyshack. How do you not? And she'll, she'll be like, I don't know if he's in, he's in Caddyshack, right? Yeah. I don't know. Now that's going to be a whole different debate. We'll just look at it. It won't be a debate because we have Google. And you can Google everything now. That's a weird thing, too. Here's how much you can Google. Okay. One time I'm watching a movie with an ex of mine, sorry honey, <laughs> I have to bring her up for the story. And um, this guy in the movie, she goes, that actor, now the actor's like a mi very mid-level actor, it's not a name or anything. We're watching Legend of Bagger Vance. I'm not gay. And there's a scene where, or there's a, the other golfer, is, is this guy, I've looked it up now, his name's Bruce McGill. He plays like the other fatter golfer, if you've ever seen it. He also is in Three Fugitives, but no one's seen that. But anyway, uh, she goes, that guy looks like an actress, and I can't figure out who it is. And I was like, well, 
I don't know. I wonder who it is. I, there was a part of me that wanted to go on that mission and figure that out. She goes, I don't know. And then she goes, Google it. And I said, who puts up on Google or on the internet? I found out who this mid-level actor looks like. And I Googled it and it was all over the place. He looks like Tyne Daly. But here's what's crazy to me. How do you get that up online? I can't tell you how many things I've come up with with my buddy and not put it up on the internet. Like, like have a revelation and don't go, well, I gotta get that up in case people Google this. Like, how many things, who's doing that? Like, my buddy Diego is trying to get a sound effect, right? He's trying to get a sound effect, so we found, for a, for a sketch we were doing, so we found crackling wood, right? He finds the, it's a one second thing that goes <coughs> Here's the weirdest part. There's like 11 comments under crackling wood. Like, there's people like, good sound. Like, first of all, what are the odds you're going to take the time to read the comment before you hear it? It's a second long. Like, it takes you longer to read the comment. You know, like, and was there going to be a debate on that? Didn't like that crackling. Like, what's the, how much do we need to post? And I picture the person that did that too is like so, the same woman that shows up at the car accident scene that like tells the cops like, I took care of everything. You know what I mean? That woman who's just like, who's just like, Everyone stay back, okay? We're taking care. But she doesn't work for the police. She has nothing to do with it, right? She's just in a robe outside, like, and then she goes up to one cop and goes, okay, so I have those people sit down. What else do you need me to do? Um, get out of here. We don't need you. We're cops. We know what we're doing. Could you stop organizing everything the way we don't want? That's the same type of person that sits in the front row at an acting class, and every time the acting teacher says something, they turn around and look at the class and go, mm she's right like letting the class know i know all about acting like there's always a person in the class that wants everyone else to know that they understand right so because they do it so much that's what they want you to know they do it all the time right so you'll just hear the teacher be like you know and you need to have a good headshot mm-hmm that's so true you guys mm. and they'll always raise their hand you know it's funny because i one time did have a bad headshot four years ago, but now I have a good headshot, and that's why I do all these movies. I do all these movies now. I'm a very successful actress. I just had a commercial for Anison. So, you should definitely listen to this teacher is the point I'm definitely trying to make. Not subtly throw my credits in. That's such a Hollywood thing. I used to be like that so much. Just subtly get my credits in to anything. Like, I could be at a site where a house is on fire and be like, maybe I should help out with this because I was in 10 Things I Hate About You. What? Yeah, like I just know a lot about, you know, production and, and how to get this done and, you know, what do you mean? Well, I was in Not Another Teen Movie. I was a slow clapper. Have you ever seen it? Oh, you have? Okay, cool. Thank you. Want me to sign that? You know, want me to sign, want me to do it for you? No, I don't. We're trying to fight a fire. I know about that. I used to do a lot of commercials for Burger King, all kinds of stuff. Two Comedy Central specials. Okay, listen, dude. I need you to leave. Oh, you need me to leave? Because I've done comedy for 20 years? No, I don't care about your credits. And some people will segue their credits in. That's the weirdest thing, too. Like when you're like, this is a, this is a real thing I experienced one time. Actual dialogue. Um, but I should change the name. But I won't change the movies, so you'll put it together. This is my friend Stephanie. She was in the Little Giants, and this is what she did. She'd go, Kyle, I was the lead in Little Giants. It's so annoying. And then you'd be like, and then you'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. And she's like, it's so annoying you do that. I was also in the American President. I can't believe you're doing that. I'm with William Morris. <laughs> like, like, like they'll be like, oh, that is annoying. He did that. What are your other credits? I'm five foot two. Uh, here's my resume. It's crazy that he said that. This town that I live in, LA, is so full of shit. Every person is so phony in this town. You go into a bar, and the only bars people want to go to are places that have other bar are, are places that are already full of people. In other words, like people only out here and most places want to do things just because other people do it. They don't sit there and go, I have an interest in that bar. They go, a line. I want to get in a line. Like, 
there's other bars that have no lines that have beer for way cheaper. But if you see a gigantic bouncer, you get into the line and then you just get in line. You're like, there must be, I got to get in here because there's a line. Dude, if you want to get anyone to any business at all, to any event, any seminar, anything, just put a bouncer in front of the door. Just have them take IDs. I don't know. Just have them do that. I don't know. And then hire 20 of your friends to show up and just have them stand there and have half of them be girls with their like dresses up above their vagina. Like and have them freezing and holding a stupid purse that's this big, like this big, so it can hold their iPhone. And it's just like this and they're all freezing and their heels are like, like this, like that's the, it's like this, right? And they're, they're, it's just like their foot is on a constant slide and it's being held back. Like it's just like the, the poor straps on their shoe are just like, ah! Ah! and it's like trying so hard to, they're just like, no, like 24 hours because they're in the, no one wants to be in an almost moonwalk position for five hours. Like I'm about to moonwalk tonight. I'm doing Michael Jackson all night and they're always freezing and they're always holding their girl. There's like four just sparkly skanks, just like, just uh, in a group, just uh, 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 and they get to the front and the bouncer's like, yeah, you're all good. They're seven, but they're all girls. So they're like, and the guys are like, you got to pay a hundred bucks to get in. So I can see sparkling skanks? Yeah. All right. And then they go in. And then it's just packs of people. Go to Vegas. That is the most packs of people ever. Just, just crazy ass. Just like, just, oh, okay. girl. and then their, their heels are falling over. You know, it's just, just tons of this crap. And then groups of guys, like, just, uh, what about that? Shirt to here, Harry Ch What about that, bro? What about that one? What about that one? And you're just like, we're packs of animals that are sparkly. Like, we're, we're just, what about that one there? What about that girl, huh? Yeah, bro. And you always see this, too. Sometimes I'll walk, like, a foot behind my fiancé. I don't look at girls. I watch guys looking at girls. Like, that's where my mind is. Like, I'll see a girl walk in that I can tell is attractive, and I just have fun watching the guys. Just hold, oh, oh. My girl's gorgeous. My fiance is so beautiful. And I know where she is all the time, even if I can't see her, but like, if she's around a corner in an aisle, I know where she is because I can see a bunch of old guys looking down that aisle. Just like, oh. The older they are, too, the more. And then they get really old and they start staring at me, too. Is there, like, a thing? Like, it seems like when they get really old, they like guys more, too. And I don't see any of that progress coming for me. Like, I'm not sitting here going, I'm starting to just want to, I like a guy's smell. <laughs> but it's like, when they're 90, it's like all you hear about. Like... There's this weird thing where they at 90 and you hear about some guy in a park with another guy. And it's just, is that what you guys do when you're 90? Just like, I don't know. Like priests and stuff, they aren't after girls. Like they're after boys. I, or they not have girls in altar. I don't know. Man. This is what actually freeing is. Like I feel no necessary... Nothing, no need for rules, no, I don't know, like I just kind of want to play, like this is playing, you know, this is so much better. I had fun though, spending all those, those times teaching people, really teaching myself by teaching you how to do it, and definitely I'm going to be doing all kinds of stuff and events and all kinds of shit, <sighs> but my stuff's really about playing, man, play. Dude, just do it. Let go and play. You don't need to go through 25-step processes to let go. You don't need to take four months to get in the moment. You need to just allow yourself to play. You don't bring up something so you can let go of it. I mean, <coughs> I need to let go of this. I have to pick it up to let go of it, right? Like, I don't just sit here and go, I got to let go of that thing. And then pick it, you, I, I have to, if you're letting go of something from your past, you have to re-pick it up. Just play and keep playing for a while. 
You know, when you want to work out, you don't go to a seminar about how you're going to let go of the fat. <laughs> you just start working out. And the fat leaves because you're creating muscle and doing a new thing. You don't need to go through in your childhood, you know why the fat's there and the fat was mad and it had a bad day and that's why it's on you and you figured it out and then you tell everybody about how you're going to let go of your fat. You just go to the gym and it will fall off. But everybody's way of letting go is to pick it up. It's the craziest world we live in. It is the craziest world. That's why it's so awesome. It's so fun. It's fun to play. And the people that are herds of people in Vegas, like that's their thing, man. And I respect it. That's, that's where they're at and that's what they want to do. I've been like that. I used to wear heels and go to, just kidding. Just kidding. I still wear heels at all. I wear heels at all. But I understand, man. Everyone's where they need to be. That's why we shouldn't waste our time getting mad about anyone else. Because, like, they're where they need to be. Anyone that's mad about anyone else is mad that those people aren't where you are. That's it. And you have this thing in your head that your way is better than everyone else's. And who cares, man? This is just play. Just let go of everything and play and play. And then... And that doesn't mean go play, go do drugs and party, just play. You can do it without needing any of that. You can just play. You can just play. And, and, the, and guess what will happen? All that crap will let go. It will let go. And you don't have to sit here and check if it's there. I can't let go of anything by checking if it's still there. It shows up again. So when people go, what's the secret to life? Even saying play is too much work. Just play. I think I'm good, man. I mean, we have so much content. What did I make? An hour?